Don't try to to do what you're doing on this earth for the perceptions of others and how they're going to see you or try to try to tailor you to meet all these people's expectations because that just leads to frustration and it's and really what we're doing is we're trying to control people's perception of us What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. And I'm your host, Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales We're the Wolves. Sales wolves. Ow! Ow! All right. This is episode 158 of the Sales Wolves podcast. And the topic of this show is... Milk toast. Milk toast. It's milk toast. And that's episode 158 of the Sales Wolves. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Let's dig into that a little bit, I guess. Don't be milk toast. I, now we're done. Yeah. What um, does that mean? Man, what let is me read the defi- let, let me read the definition. Some people won't won't know what it is, but it's spelled M I L Q U E T O A S T. Milk toast. And as an adjective, it means feeble, insipid, or bland. Insipid. Oof, that sounds terrible. Mm-hmm. And as a noun, it means a timid or feeble person. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that that people do is they get, and I've done it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I I know because I've done it myself for years and years, and I see people doing it all the time. Is they try to be all things to all people and they so desperately care how they're perceived that they never really double down on themselves get to know themselves become aware personally grow and when I see those people Mm. it's like a timid soul and it's like it's it's uh they're milk toast they're bland and there's a lot of salespeople that do that that fit that description a lot of sales I think of people. a lot of like bankers right <laughs> a lot of people that have to please a lot of people on a regular basis not my bankers by the way if you're listening <laughs> none of my bankers my are banker. milk toast mother <laughs> <laughs> um but uh but but yeah I, it's tyler and i were just really laughing about it because this won't be a long sales wolf podcast because this is up to everybody that listens to this and even the people that don't you get decide you get to decide who you are mm-hmm. you get to decide who you are and you know whether you're the villain or the hero be one be mm-hmm. one of them yeah. whether you're hot or cold be really really cold or be really really hot like just the bland like you ever get you ever get in a bathtub? This is weird. <laughs> you ever get well, in a yes, bathtub and it's just just lukewarm? You don't take baths. No, not a lot. I'm a bath taker. Um, that's miserable. Mm-hmm. Or or you get a cup of coffee and it's yeah. and it's and it's just just barely warm. It's <laughs> disgusting. Mm-hmm. Um, or or you, you have a thing of ice water or whatever and the ice melts and you're outside on a sunny day and you go to drink it and you're thinking you're drinking ice water mm-hmm. and it's just this bland, it's not cold, it's not hot. Um, and so what, what in this podcast, what does, what does that mean? So what I would encourage people to do is when you're doing something do you do you and do it as you don't try to to do what you're doing on this earth for the perceptions of others and how they're going to see you or try to try to tailor you to meet all these people's expectations because that just leads to frustration and it's and really what we're doing is we're trying to control people's perception of us or not be judged or mm-hmm. be judged as different and 
And I would encourage you to let go of that and be you. Um, the world needs people that are fired up to be themselves. Mm -hmm. And um, there's like a there's a there's a dynamic between being agreeable and being and having convictions. Right. I think like you need to be a person of conviction. Sure. You need to have certain topics, certain things in your life that you are very convicted for or of 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 and it's not about just being a yes man it's not about just being agreeable it's not about being the person in the room that everyone knows like oh well you know he'll cooperate he'll cooperate he always does always yeah. but being someone that that does have convictions and someone that does stand up for themselves and, yeah. and Gary V talks about uh, being willing to fall on your own sword yeah. that when business decisions are being made that like stick up for yourself and and be convicted in the things that you're passionate about because if you're going to fail you might as well fail doing it the way you wanted to do it that's right then just going along with what was told and right. and just being agreeable and having that thing fail anyways i would much rather fail and know that i was at least doing what i was convicted to do right um, but and failure is the only way to learn. Yeah. So, who and most people avoid failure because they're trying to control again the perceptions of others mm -hmm. and how they're seen. Yeah. When they need to turn inward, and it only matters how you see yourself. Mm -hmm. And failure is a tool, just like a hammer. You use failure to learn, mm -hmm. right? Um, use a hammer and nail. You're hammering something. You're building something. You hit your finger. You just learned. Yeah. That was a failure, but you learned, mm -hmm. and and so failure is is one of the greatest things. And when you avoid that, you're just a milk toast. Yeah, and if you think about just the fact that there's that you can't you can't name a single person of significance in the world that you would describe as milk toast. As milk toast. Nope. And even though we know that, what are we doing about it? Right. And have we? really taking the time to really reflect and become self-aware enough to realize what our convictions are and what things are important to us, right. what things do we know a lot about, and we can stand up for ourselves uh, when it comes down to those types of, of conversations to be someone that I would want to be the, yeah, I don't know if I would want to be the opposite, but I would want to, I would want people to look at me and say that he truly believed in what he was speaking about, or, or he, he embodied that which he was trying to do, and right. not just somebody look back on me as like, well, he just kind of went with the flow. Yeah, he just, just kind of went with it. He just, he just floated. Yeah, yeah. It's. A, I think there's a lot a, of people that are floating through life, and that are flowing through their sales career. Quite frankly. Yep. Since that's what this yeah. podcast is all about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're floating. They they. You know, it may even be a top performer. You may have a top performer listening, and they're doing really great in their company. Yeah. And they've developed a certain skill set where they can do, where they can mindlessly do something. Mm -hmm. It's not difficult for them anymore. I would encourage that person to challenge themselves. Quit comparing yourself to others and your success in whatever role you're in to others. Mm -hmm. And start because you're competing with others, then, and competing with others is useless. They're different. Mm -hmm. And so, competing with yourself is how you continually up the bar in every area of your life. We're talking about business and finance and sales. You're, you're constantly competing with yourself. So how can I get better? How can I get more done in less time? How can I? And you're, and you're competing with yourself, not others leave their perception up to you and sometimes people are like well I don't want to be I don't want to be judged guess what they're going to judge you anyway mm -hmm. judgment's coming who cares that's where you have to let go of that milk toast mindset of caring what they think mm -hmm. and it only matters what you think about you and you becoming the best version of yourself and somebody that is becoming the best version of themselves is the opposite of yeah. a milk toast person or a milk toast mentality mm -hmm. that bland and I don't want to cause waves, or I don't. I don't want to be perceived as whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know. And anytime you try to control others' perceptions, I hope everyone listening knows that to try to control someone else, 
That's probably, it's impossible. <laughs> and it's probably the source of 90% of anxiety. Mm, and frustration. And frustration. Yeah. Yep. So, so control what you can control. And that's you. And, that and decide who do I want to be. Who do I want to be? Not what do I want to create, but who do I want to create myself to be? Not what do I want to do. It was funny. I was thinking about this the other day, and this is off topic, but I think the way we set goals is all wrong. Hmm. Um, and I was thinking, you know, if you're, if you're at this stage and you set a goal income-wise, up here so you make fifty thousand and you set a hundred thousand dollar goal and you start going after it right that's a person that's getting uncomfortable and they're Mm -hmm. they're making something happen when they get that hundred thousand that feels empty Mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like enough it never does when i got the car i wanted when i got the house i wanted it, it 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 was cool but it was like Damn, yeah. that's, I feel the same. A minute. And so what I think we should do is I think those goals are in the journey. So I'm going to accomplish this, 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 and this. But the top of the mountain is when I get here and I've accomplished those goals, who do I want to be? Mm-hmm. And that's how you – and then you use your goals to get uncomfortable and focus on who you want to become. And that is the fulfillment of the journey. Hmm. And then that peak just gives you the vantage point to look to the next peak to see who do I want to become next. Hmm. And it's almost like those benchmarks, those goals that you hit along the way just become like symptoms of that person. They become symptoms of that's the type of thing that that person would do. Yeah. And so those are the things that you end up doing, but it's ultimately – trying to become that person not just trying to do that thing that's exactly right it just becomes one of the many things that that type of person would do that's right along the way and somebody that doesn't do that milk toast mentality (laughs) hey a milk toast person (laughs) (laughs) it's no good i feel like that's an actual like brand name of something is it not i don't know i don't know i have no idea like the worst cereal ever (laughs) <laughs> milk toast. <laughs> milk toast. <laughs> uh, can that, you imagine that's that poor person a, cereal. Can you, ima- can you imagine? Your dad just comes with a loaf of bread. And <laughs> put put three loaves of bread, <laughs> bread in a bowl. Take the milk and leave it on the counter for about eight hours, uh-huh. oh. and then pour it in there on top of the on top of the bread, and then let that sit for about another two hours, and then eat that. Mm-hmm. It's delicious. Nobody like nobody wants to be around that person. My granddad used to always ask me if I'd ever had a jam sandwich before. You take two pieces of bread and you jam them together. <laughs> <laughs> then he used to always make peanut butter sandwiches where he would literally spread on butter and then he would like crinkle some peanuts on there. Peanuts on it. And he would eat a peanut butter sandwich. That's interesting. It was literally that. <laughs> You know, I've got to try that before I yeah. before I exit. Try this the point. jam sandwich first. Jam sandwich and a peanut butter sandwich. Mm-hmm. All right, that's it, guys. This is episode 158 of the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host Tyler Harris, Joseph Caldwell, and we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! Ow!